also has significant socioeconomic impacts by driving increase in healthcare costs, poverty, and loss of productive human capital. Tobacco use and exposure is a major risk for non-communicable diseases, which include heart disease, stroke, cancer, diabetes, and chronic lung disease. These conditions are collectively responsible for almost 70% of all deaths worldwide. Tobacco smoking is a known risk factor for many respiratory infections and increases the severity of respiratory diseases. Smoking any kind of tobacco reduces lung capacity and increases the risk of many respiratory infections and can increase the severity of respiratory diseases. The act of smoking and the social nature of many forms of tobacco use present risks of person-to-person -person transmission of respiratory diseases such as the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID-19. The most common form of tobacco use is cigarette smoking. Other tobacco products include water pipe tobacco or shisha, various smokeless tobacco products, cigars, pipe tobacco, bidis, and others. All forms of tobacco are harmful, and there is no safe level of exposure to tobacco. Often, users of these other forms of tobacco do not understand or appreciate their health dangers. Smokeless tobacco, that is tobacco used by sniffing, chewing, or placing between the gum and cheek or lip, equally increases the risk of severe disease when one is infected by COVID-19. Its use presents a risk in spread of infection through product handling, frequent spitting, and sharing of paraphernalia, such as mouthpieces and hoses. Smokers often have a persistent cough, and infected COVID-19 smokers who are not yet symptomatic could be a source of spread of infection, as the cough can easily be dismissed as a smoker's cough. Nicotine, the active principle in tobacco products, is highly addictive. Several devices and products have been developed as nicotine replacement therapy to break nicotine addiction. These include nicotine gum, nicotine patches, sublingual lozenges, electronic nicotine and non-nicotine delivery systems, commonly referred to as e-cigarettes and others. Most of these products use pure nicotine and could be harmful and increase the risk of heart disease and lung disorders. These alternate forms of tobacco use and nicotine replacement therapy, largely targeting the youth, have been deceptively promoted as reduced harm products and or products to help people quit conventional tobacco smoking. These products expose users to toxic cancer-causing emissions, and currently there is insufficient and persuasive evidence to suggest that they are less harmful than conventional cigarettes. Kenya signed, ratified, and domesticated the World Health Organization Framework Convention on tobacco control and further enacted the Tobacco Control Act of 2007. The spirit of embracing the convention and enacting the law is to discourage the use of tobacco and reduce or altogether eliminate its use and its harmful effects on health. For there are no safe tobacco products. Remember, tobacco is harmful in all 
forms. We urge those who use tobacco in any form, whether cigarettes, water pipes, beads, cigars, or heated to tobacco products, to pl place their health first and quit the habit. The ministry operates a quit tobacco use service accessible by calling the toll-free quit tobacco 1192 line. Fellow Kenyans, as we turn now to our COVID-19 statistics for today, from a sample of 1,682 tested in the last 24 hours, 114 people have tested positive, bringing to 34,315 the number of confirmed positive cases. From the cases, all are Kenyans except one foreigner. 93 of them are male and 21 are female. The youngest is a one-year-old infant. The oldest is 85. The distribution of cases by counties is as follows. Mombasa registered 17 cases, Nairobi 16, Garissa 15, Kiambu 14, Kitui 14, Busia 12, Taita Taveta 8, Wasingishu 6, Nyeri 5, Migori 3, Machakos 2, Embu 1, and Kisumu 1. The 17 cases in Mombasa are in Vita 6, Changamu and Kisauni 4 cases each, Jomvu 2, and Likoni 1. In Nairobi, the 16 cases are in Dagoreti South, 4, Dagoreti North, 3, and Bakasi East, Kamkunji, and Westlands, two cases each, and Bakasi Central, and Bakasi West, and Langata, one case each. Garissa's 15 cases are all from Garissa Town. Kiambu's 14 cases, 13 of them are from Thika, and one from Katundu South. Kisi's 14 cases come from Kitui South, 13, and Kitui Central, 1. The rest of the information is provided in the brief that will be given to you. I am happy to inform you that today, 318 patients have recovered from the disease. 263 of them have been released from home-based care program, and 55 have been discharged from various health facilities where they were receiving care. The total recoveries now stands at 20,211. And we want to thank our healthcare workers for their selfless devotion to duty that has enabled us to achieve these results. Today, I'm also delighted to inform you that we have not registered any deaths. And our fatality, therefore, remains at 577. Asante ni sana. Good afternoon. I'm Purity Musea from KBC. My question is in regard to tobacco use in the country. Tobacco. You said tobacco. You said that all forms of tobacco are harmful to our bodies. Uh, recently, I have two concerns. Recently, there was a, a, a anti-tobacco use body in the country, the Kenya Tobacco Control Alliance, that had raised a concern over interference of by the tobacco industry during this time of COVID-19. And again, what is the ministry doing to ban some of the products and implement, because there was a ban on shisha, but still the implementation is still a major concern. Sada Hassan, KTN News. Uh, my question is on children. 
how many children uh, have tested positive so far for the virus, uh, how many are asymptomatic and uh, symptomatic, and uh, what are the measures that you've put in place because a recent study has shown that children are silent at transmitters of the virus. Uh, the second question is, uh, in Western region, circumcision uh, festival was done, and uh, is there any uh, outcome of that festival having been done because there was no social distancing and uh, all the measures that are put in place? Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Graham Kajilo from The Standard. My question probably it will be a response. Um, what is your take on what uh, the World Health Organization, has, the analysis that uh, the WHO has made about uh, the numbers being fewer? And today you've seen uh, just over a little bit of a thousand samples that you have tested with 114. So do you agree with what um, WHO is saying about the less testing and less data being collected from hospitals and all that? And also we'd like to get the numbers of um, critically ill patients um, at, at the moment. So uh, I will start with uh, Kajilu, and uh, somehow I knew you were going to ask me that question. Maybe it's because you had raised it in, in a write-up somewhere. Uh, indeed, uh, the World Health Organization uh, put out uh, a report where they had raised some issues of concern regarding, uh, rather they had thrown some caution to our interpretation of uh, what we're seeing in terms of uh, the numbers uh, and the positivity rate. I think that by and large, the, the issues that were raised uh, uh, have validity uh, because they could truly, yes, affect the, the trajectory. And uh, one was contact tracing. I think the document uh, uh, raised the issue that contract tracing may, may not have been as effective as it ought to have been in some places. And indeed, we did say on several occasions here that there has been a challenge in contact tracing, particularly in specific uh, localities, uh, especially in some of the hotspots, like uh, Nairobi County being one of those hotspot areas. If you will recall that as this pandemic uh, and the numbers started growing in the country, and you begin to pick up more and more positive cases, equally then the network of contacts becomes almost an exponential number. And this poses challenges in terms of being able to, to follow up and, uh, and, and, and identify and trace and then test each and every contact and, and then their contacts and so on. Uh, that has always been a challenge. It became even a bigger challenge the moment that uh, now contact tracing uh, responsibility fell upon the counties themselves. So yes, we have had, we have had contract tracing uh, challenges in some areas, but despite that, I would like to say we need to look at the figures that we are reporting and the trajectory and trend in, in a more broader light in, uh, in the light also of comparing, com comparing it with what's happening in uh, other places and uh, other like places like ours in other countries within sub-Saharan Africa. And generally, what comforts us is that at least that trajectory seems to parallel what is happening in some of these other countries. So it gives some level of comfort that perhaps uh, you know, we are seeing some development in that area. You heard the president speak yesterday and say that uh, we need to approach this with a lot of caution. And I have said it before that we need not to feel that we are out of the woods and begin to rejoice and relax what we have been doing. We may be moving in the right direction, but we need to give it time and establish and see whether this uh, trend that we are seeing will persist and will bring us to a flattening of the curve and thereafter decline uh, or the slope of that curve. If we continue 
with the various measures that are already in place that have contributed to where we are today, then I think we will be able to navigate this area and we'll be able to see uh, ourselves at a point where we can comfortably at some point say, yes, we have flattened the curve and we're there. But in the meantime, we need to be able to continue uh, with the, 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 the efforts that we have been putting in place. We need to continue to urge Kenyans to continue to observe all those measures that have been put in place, particularly the wearing of masks, the physical and social distancing, because those are really, really key to breaking transmission cycle of the virus. So, Kajilu, just to, to, to answer your question, uh, in contact tracing, perhaps, but as I said, I think we, we are moving on well. In the area of testing, it is true that uh, the samples you test, the number of samples you test, the nature of the number of samples you test, where, where, how did you sample them? Do they actually represent, uh, are they representative of that general population that we are talking about? Uh, those uh, can be valid as well. But generally, when we look at all the sampling, and even when we segregate this sampling, according to county, we tend to be seeing the same kind of trend, and that gives us some level of, uh, of confidence too that uh, despite, despite these shortcomings, uh, that the, the, the trend we are maintaining is a good trend and we need to continue along that pathway. Uh, with regard to the number of uh, critical cases, the breakdown of the clinical management and critical cases, uh, I think mm, perhaps if Dr. Kuria might have that, can share with you, but w there is data available that gives down that breakdown. Okay, Purity from KBC. Your question was regarding tobacco use and the role of industry. Uh, yes, we still maintain, and WHO's position is that tobacco in all of its form is harmful. Tobacco is harmful. There's a strong industry out there that promotes the use of tobacco. The convention and the acts, country-specific acts that have been put in place, have been done so, so that we are able to regulate how that industry conducts itself and markets its product. And uh, there have been issues in terms of regulating the sale of tobacco, the advertisement of tobacco, the use of different products. That continues to be an area that the ministry is determined to work on in order to ensure that Kenyans' health uh, concerns are taken care of. And we will continue to do that, work with industry where it is possible to be able to, to, to reduce those risks that these products might pose to our people. And there's a lot, lot, lot of advocacy, civil, civil advocacy in this area, especially of tobacco use. KTN, children. How many children are positive? I'm sure we, we can put that data together if we don't have it. And how many are asymptomatic? How many are symptomatic? My guess would be, you know, we are seeing from the number of cases that we have, over 90% of our cases at the time of testing tend to be negative. What is known about infection in children is that a large proportion of children are asymptomatic or display a very mild disease. So I would expect that that same figure of 90% or maybe even higher would apply for children uh, who turn out positive. There is also quite a bit of debate regarding the issue of children being super spreaders of the disease. I think the verdict is not yet out there. There are studies going on. And this is very important and very re relevant because when we talk about schools and reopening of schools, it is this kind of information that will inform us 
what the risks are in terms of transmission when children uh, are, uh, are, are uh, schools are open and children come together. So asymptomatics will always pose a risk of spreading the disease. How effective that spread is, is still a question of debate. There is a lot of work going on to determine whether those who are symptomatic when they do spread this, this, this virus. What is the form of this virus in such people? There is a possibility that some of these viruses in some of these asymptomatic cases may not actually be able to be transmitted to other people simply because they may not be viable. I think that question is also out there. They may not be viable to be able to continue a transmission. But these are areas that we watch carefully and learn from what is being done in other places as far as the disease in children stands. And if you remember, in one of the briefs here, our topic of focus in that brief was really on children and the disease in children. The, fest the festival you refer to in Western Kenya, I believe it was a circumcision event. Uh, our position as a ministry still is that large gatherings of that kind where people come together, interact very closely, still remain prohibited because those are, 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 are fertile ground for transmission of the disease. Uh, we have not seen any alarm bells that are coming out from some of these places to indicate to us that there, there has been a sort of a surge in transmission, uh, perhaps as a result of some of the relaxations uh, we have seen or because people have decided to flout these rules and, and go ahead and do uh, activities of that nature. But we are carefully watching and again we want to say in the strongest term that those prohibitions still stand. Gatherings of large gatherings of people still stand. Remember when the president eased the regulations, he was very clear. It was in the area of uh, of weddings, I believe, and uh, also worship ended, where the number was extended to 100, provided, of course, the, the provisio there is that the existing physical and, and social distance measures are applied. Okay, so where people more than a hundred or so gather and they are not applying those procedures and they fall outside of these two groups, it is still prohibited. I think uh, th those were the questions that were posed to me. I have responded to them. And uh, I will ask uh, Dr. Kuria perhaps to add to some elements of uh, my response and, and respond to questions uh, that were posed. Thank Dr. you, Professor Rashid. I think Kajiro had a specific question on the number of patients who are under critical care. And yes, the number is 27. 27 are still in ICU. 16 are on uh, supplemental oxygen. And 11 requiring ventilatory support. Maybe to expand more on the issue of uh, gatherings, I think we have received more than 500 calls this morning through the office, people inquiring as to whether gatherings have not been allowed to 100. And I think uh, as Rashid has uh, explained this clearly, so just to repeat what you've said, sir, that the gatherings have not been allowed. I think the president was very clear that on consultations with the Interfaith Council that he increased the number of those attending service, weddings and funerals to 100. But I don't think he lifted any restrictions on social gatherings. So the answer to those who are calling the ministry repeatedly is that those gatherings are still prohibited by the ministry as for the last three presidential directive. There has been a query repeatedly on the number of tests that we are doing per day and that we have been reporting the number of positives and not reporting where these samples are coming from. And to say that these numbers are actually available, 
at our emergency operation center. And for example, like today, you could say that out of the cases that reported 17 in Mombasa, it's out of a sample, a sample size of 618. In Nairobi, we had a sample size of 366 and 16 positives. We had from Migori another 124 samples taken and the three turned positive. We had a sample from 103, uh, from Kajiado 103, and zero turning positive. Was in Gishu, giving us 101 samples and six turning positive. The rest are 73 samples and 15 turning positive. Again, this data is available if upon request at the emergency operation center. So those asking where these samples are coming from, they are coming from all the counties and from our surveillance efforts. Thank you. Thank you for that, sir. Okay. Thank you.